Hi, I'm Dave from boyinaband.com and today I'll be showing you some of Kong's sampling ability. And by some of I mean all of. And by all of I mean both things. Anyway, Kong Drum Designer, let's initialize the patch and open it up. And then we're going to start, as always I'm triggering this with my MIDI keyboard now, um, by opening up NN Nano Sampler. Now this is very similar to the NNXT sampler and is really good for drum and percussion sounds. So let's just get stuck in. Now as always you can load up some samples. Just put in a ran random uh, kick. There we are. And there's quite a few options down here. So for example that's got quite a long decay on it. So we could just take that down if we wanted. We could even make it fade in a bit, but I don't want to. And you can adjust the level and stuff like that. You can reverse it, change the start of the sample. By the way, all these around here affect every sample that's in here in the hit sample section. Now you may be wondering why there's four different things, and that isn't to layer them. Layering is available as you can see, but the four different hits here relate to the four different hit types. So for example, if I was to put in a different kick, on hit number two and change hit type to two it triggers the different kick now this can be useful for example if I was to link this pad to pad one that's how you link a pad to a different drum module on a different pad so then we can have that pad triggering hit one and this pad triggering hit two and they both share all these parameters so you'd only have to change the parameters once if you wanted to change for example the decay or some of the velocity options or something like that so quite useful the layering is very simple just add layer it makes a new space there you can see you can scroll up and down with the little nifty scroll bar and simply just open up and add in something else to layer it with. And there we go. You can even have it so that depending on the velocity, how hard you hit the key, or how hard you define in the sequencer, it triggers a different sample. So very quietly, very hard. So yeah, just as you'd expect from the NN series samplers. Monophonic and exclusive hits, these both allow you to cancel out longer hits. So if we take the decay right up again, you can hear that's quite long. I'll take the velocity up as well because that's getting a bit difficult to control. That's nice and long but if I trigger this sample really quickly it cuts it off dead. Again quite useful. And then the mod wheel option here where we can make it so that the mod wheel changes the decay for, and you can go both ways it's bisexual I mean bipolar. Uh, if we take it down it takes the pitch up and the decay down. Quite cool. I'm just changing the mod wheel on my MIDI keyboard here. Okay, enough of that. Now, let's remove a layer. And, in fact, let's remove both. And let's try something a bit different that we can do in Reason 5. We can record our own samples. Now, as you might have noticed, as I speak, the in here goes up and down. Now we can see that my voice is going into the top in the audio input. Now, if we hit tab, you see this sampling input here. Now all we need to do is find the channel my voice is going into, channel 1 here, and just drag channel 1 into the sampling input. And that means, as you can see, my voice is being sampled. Well, it will be as soon as we record it. So let's do some original samples. Here we go. Okay, I just clicked edit as soon as it finished. It's automatically found the start of the sample, really cool. And we can just drag the end point to wherever we want. I've got it set to snap sample start end to transients, which means it doesn't make any clicks or pops. Very cool. Again, you can reverse it. So if we play that, that's weird. But yeah, if we uh, crop it, normalize it to make it nice and loud and name it, how do you spell that? Bzzzt, I think. Now you can see here, when I trigger the sample... Cool, I think I'll make it monophonic. Now, 
let's make a separate hit type and I'm going to record a separate sample for that cool now we're nearly there let's add some hi-hats okay I need to set this one up drum assignment one hit type three Now I'm just going to layer this one sample just to show you, adding layers, start sampling. You can see it found my voice there, so I'll just skip that and go straight to the and save that. And now that one is layered. Very useful. I'm pretty sure that'll be a number one hit. Anyway, that shows you a bit about the Nano Sampler and Reason 5's cool sampling ability. You can do a lot more with the samples than that in the actual NNXT samplers. I'll show you that later on. But if we open up Nurse Rex Loop Player, I can show you some more things we can do. So I'm going to load up a Rex Loop file. That's pretty cool. Now there's several things you can do here. Look at the hit types. You've got loop trig, which is just what we're on now, where it just triggers the entire loop. Quite obvious, really. If you have it on monophonic, you can trigger it multiple times without it overlapping, so. Something like that. And polyphonic allows you to make a big mess. I'm sure you'll find a lot of musical use for that. But chunk trig is quite cool. That allows us to, if we have all of these pads set to chunk trig, you can see as I added that one in, look down here, the pad 3 automatically gets assigned. That means pad 1 is for these samples, pad 2 is for these, and pad 3 triggers these slices. So, so you can kind of chop and change. And you can assign that to all the pads. In fact, if you do that now quickly, I don't know if there's a quick way to do that, I've only just got the piece of software, so you'll have to bear with me. But now we can see, if we look here at the pads, and I trigger them. And you can have a bit of NPC-ish fun with them. Slice trig is a nice simple one. Just pick the slice you want to trigger, hit the trig, tick, and you can see if we just untick the first one, that now it triggers that one instead. If you have multiple samples selected, it'll alternate through them. Seemingly randomly, which is quite cool. You could do some sweet multi-sampling with that. And lastly, you've got stops. So if we were to make pad one stop and pad two loop trig, so it triggers the whole loop. In fact, if we just half the length of the loop, so it triggers less of it. You can do that just by dragging these or changing the values more precisely here. Then pad 2 triggers it. And if we want to stop it soon, just hit pad 1. Frickin' sweet. And if we look down here, we can see we've got a few different options. As per. That's as per usual if you're not English. Now we're going to change the pitch. As you can see, that affects the entire loop. And you can reverse samples, so I've got this one here. Just reverse. Nice and simple. You can change how the velocity affects these parameters, so you might want it so that the harder you hit, the higher the pitch. So that's useful. And the same with the envelope. You can change the volume of it over time that way. And the mod, so you can change the effect the modulation wheel has on the sound. And you should be able to change these by moving the pitch up and down. I'm not quite sure why it's not working. But I'm sure when you guys get Reason 5, you'll find out the stupid thing I'm completely missing that isn't allowing me to do that. Not this, is it? No. Oh well, worth a try. There you go. A quick look at Nurse Rex. Good name for it. And NN Nano Sampler. Bye. Bye, 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 b